it's a great uh, moment for all of us on the teachers day i think uh, when you are when we speak about teachers day and i spent most of my career as a teacher it's a proud privilege to be associated with this palikota national award which is basically honoring the startups who are uh, taking the education to the next stage of uh, growth and development i remember uh, uh, when uh, dr abdul kalam was been asked uh, by one of the reporter at some point of time what do you want to be remembered as do you want to be remembered as a the missile man of india the person who has uh, developed a lot of uh, contribution to the space technology or as a scientist or as the one of the best presidents of the country his answer was that i wanted to be remembered as a teacher and i think that is actually a great uh, acknowledgement to the teacher community so my best wishes to all the teachers and the new generation teachers who are actually supporting the education field uh, but using the technology before i go into the specific uh, uh, topic of uh, looking at what are the chromosomes of a successful educational startup uh, let me just uh, uh, congratulate all of you who have been participating in uh, uh, in this award in this context and also developed very interesting solutions which has actually transformed in this education sector now uh, you have i'm sure most of you are technology experts but you have actually entered into a field which is having a lot of immense potential there are few reasons for that i used to speak when i used to uh, conduct training program for the teachers that remember can you remember names of some top organizations which are let's say 50 years old so i'm sure that our minds will come out amazon or flipkart or uh, dell motors or things like that think about organizations which are 100 years old now i'm sure that that set narrows down and you may have few which may be ibm or few of them think about something which is more than 500 years old which is still being in the popular and you will see that the only thing which is remaining 500 years old is only universities you don't have any other business organizations with all their profitability all their might all their trade ability we don't have 500 or 1000 year old organizations which are still existing other than the education field you remember about oxford or you remember about cambridge which are there for years of uh, years and they continue to be there so that is the power of this education sector that it actually have a very very long lasting uh, endurance into the system as such but having said that there is also another side to this which is also very important in our context uh, i am sure that most of you may be knowing especially the education technologists may be knowing dr anand agarwal the the person who has actually revolutionized to some extent the the mooc movement in the world uh, through the edx platform the professor at uh, mit who has actually developed this uh, uh uh edx ed platform which actually created a large number of courses so dr anand alwar used to speak about a very interesting story he used to say that look at uh, a class of 1960s in one of the top institutions in the world and you can see in the classroom uh people are uh, i mean it's maybe a black and white classroom obviously and uh, i'm speaking about 1960s and 70s and you can see that the teacher will be writing on the board or maybe using an ospi projector and a few people may be sitting in the front who are very studious and they will be looking at very keenly watching it and at the back of back of the class either people may be sleeping or people may be reading uh, books this is a story of 1960s or 1970 class now come back to 2013 that is what the moment we spoke about this example the same class same or the same institutions take the class we have very colorful class now you have projectors you have uh, very nice screens which is teacher may be using computers again when you go you can see the front row people will be again very studious sitting in the back end used of books they may be looking at their ipads or they may be looking at their mobiles and doing something else so the point which the other one used to communicate is that why disruption has happened in many other fields many other fields of business one field which has not been disrupted was education till recently and uh, we still believe on a specific set of close courses and specific sets of uh, uh, education models where people may actually be being taught rather than an emphasis on the learning but in the last few years this is completely changed we have seen and the new education policy which uh, professor uh, varghese has rightly pointed out actually looks at one of the very key element of it along with the 
conventional philosophy of equity and uh, access, which is very important for India, we also speak about giving flexibility and learner centeredness, where you are actually moving from a taught model to a learned model. And in this, in this model, where I think all this educational technology which you provide are actually going to be very, very relevant. Suddenly you see that, in fact, going back to Professor Anand Agarwal's speech, he used to say that in his professor, professorial role, he must have taught around 1,000 students without using technology. But one period, one time when he used a technology, the very first time he used a technology, he had close to around 21,000 students. So you can see the type of scale in which you are suddenly making it available to the world as such. This is a disruption which, is, which, is, which, which we are waiting for. And while we know that COVID has brought in a lot of uh, problems for most of us, it, uh, to me, for education startups and education technologies, this is actually the perfect storm which was waiting to happen. And it, how well we actually going to use this perfect storm is basically where we are going to ride the next way of growth asset. And I think that is basically the context in which we need to actually look at the education startups. And I'm sure that many of us have uh, come out with very interesting solutions, etc. But let me put a, pros a perspective on the education startup and then I come back to the specific challenges which education startups will face and I'm sure my uh, very good friend, uh, Mr. Kamath, who will be speaking about uh, after this, who is actually a, a, he's, he's a developer, he has got a product and he's also a person who's investing uh, in companies. So he is the right person to tell you about uh, the real challenges of it. But let me also put some perspectives on that. But before that, let me, uh, uh, let me just put a point here that what is the, why this disruption is required and what is the need of this disruption, etc. Now, if you look at, uh, if you look at the history of education, uh, substantially in the world, and uh, before the last century, the education was primarily focusing on teacher and a very, very small group of students who the teacher will actually align and help. In other words, the education was what we call as a wholesome education. So in, in other words, a professor, I may be a professor in English, but if you are going to come and, or I am a professor of let's say physics, but if you are going to give me an answer paper where there is an English mistake is there, I, I am going to correct that also. Not like the siloed approach which we have currently in the, in the, uh, in the current education as such. Now we call in India, call us the, what we call as the Gurugula type of education, right? In a Gurugula type of education, it is important that the teacher knows the learning pace of each student. And I used to joke that if, if we had adopted the school system, we never had a Bhima or Arjuna because Bhima will be asked to do archery and Arjuna will be asked to do the Geda and both of them will fail in the exams and they will not be out by now. The Drona knew that this person's way of learning is this and he actually fine-tuned on that. This is what today we call as a precision education. Now comes the last century. In the last century was the century of mass productions. It's a, the whole philosophy was of mass production. The Ford brought it, the Fordian philosophy of bringing a large amount of uh, products uh, at a lower cost. It actually came out to the, into the education also. So from a very, very small schools, we started moving into very large schools. The model of specialization came and people started looking everything into silos per se. This continued for a long period, and you don't have a model where I cannot have an economy of scale. At the same time, I need to have a position education. This model was not there. This is basically where the technology comes into picture. The, this new education, by right, through the technology, what is we are achieved, and that is precisely what good MOOC courses are achieving, good technology product is achieving, is that it actually maps each learner's learning paradigms, learning curve, and actually allow and enable the teachers to actually form their teaching strategies based on that. Earlier it was not possible because in a, if I'm going to a class of 60, it's very difficult for me in a limited period of time to catch all this data because at the end I may not be able to concentrate all of them and create it. And we know, most of the teachers know that we actually many times try to go into the average and you get both plus three sigma and minus three sigma students getting demotivated in either way. Now, this is basically where the technology comes into picture. So the point which I was trying to emphasize is that it is not that we are automating a normal classroom. Unfortunately, it is being happening in many cases, but it is 
if you automate a mess, you will get only a faster mess. So why we were doing in a normal classroom in this model is because we have challenges to do that. We cannot really go into each, each student's learning path, except in small classrooms. But technology allows you that, right? We know that even uh, in the retail space and other things, the data can be analyzed and do Such customized learning paradigms, when you brought into the technological domain, you actually make the richness of education. So the flexibility and richness of education, which becomes a meaning of education, is something which the right startups brings into the uh, picture. I'm sure many of your products may be having that capability, but if not, please use the technology's capabilities to do that. Uh, I used to use a very simple tool like uh, Moodle, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, uh, and a, a learning management system. It's something which you can actually communicate with the students. But more than that, it actually can map the student. How much time a student has actually spent on a particular topic? How much time a student has actually uh, uh, looked at a particular uh, area? Which actually, as a teacher, will give you an insight to see that, okay, this is an area where this student is weak at. And accordingly, we can create the teaching strategies, etc. The efficiency and the effectiveness is brought together into the education technology. Area. And those, those products which has brought in that, they are the ones which are actually growing into the big stage assets. So that is, I think, the key crux of the key element of the new technology-based solutions per se. But we know that that is not enough. Any such solutions require supporting ecosystem, supporting support, supporting uh, uh, enabling support, uh, supporting mechanisms per se. The, the Palikoda Malwad is, for, for example, is primarily looking at that. How do we actually look at, in fact, when I, when Professor Varghese talked to me first time, I was so excited about this idea because he was saying that a large number of people have actually now brought education to the places where it was not reachable earlier. A quality education to the, and we need to actually recognize and support them. And it was a noble idea. And again, I uh, thank Professor Varghese and taking this initiative. Now, important thing is to go into the next stage, you require a scalability. And any startup succeeds when it has a scalable model. The technology brought in the efficiency, the effectiveness, and it also brought in the scalability. Because we actually be able to ensure that the content which is getting generated can actually be scaled up in some manner or other if the technology is proper, provided you have designed in that manner as such. Please note, India still has only around 25% of its people in the in the in the higher education, even if you have we speak about a large GER in the in the school education, we know that dropouts is very hard, large. We also know that if some of you are in education, must be read, must be following Pradham studies. We know that even the even around forty percent of the students in standard five or standard eight cannot really follow what is happening in even standard two. Now these are all problems, but these are all opportunities. So what I mean to say is that. We are actually looking at a large, huge market. We had great dreams. It was there in 2009, we thought about it. When uh, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister took over, he also reiterated it, where we wanted to make sure that at least half of our people, that's 500 million people, to be skilled anymore. But today, we end up in less than 5 million people or 15 million people. So you have a, you have a huge gap in all these things. This is the scalability which is available for us, provided we have a great solution. Now, earlier we had an issue. The issue is that many of the edutech startups, investors will look at only if the investor has got a very long horizon. Because generally we believe that edutech startups takes around six to seven years to break even. Because how do you actually ensure that these people will, the solution will be known to people? Because there was no need, because colleges and schools were there, and they were, they were people who were not aware of this. Now that is basically why I said this is a great opportunity for you. Because of COVID, again the world is gone from the mass to small, and because of COVID, people actually start looking at solutions. The governments are actually promoting. Governments are actually giving infrastructure. Governments are creating infrastructure. Everything is actually the right ambience for us. We have infrastructure, we have a government interest, we have uh, colleges and schools who are willing to take it up. And now if you have a good solution, I'm sure the investors will also be interested to look at it. So you have, in, in essence, we require a few things. 
we are actually getting in this a sector which was earlier not disrupted so when it is getting disrupted look at a new learning paradigm and create your product accordingly don't underestimate the value of the existing teachers at the end the world has moved leaps and frogs over the years right whatever it was in 50 years back and what we should look at today the amount of inventions which has happened in the last 50 years is more than the inventions which has happened all those years before that that's all contribution of teachers because these people are being educated by some teachers somewhere so use that knowledge use the technology power come out with very interesting products and then the ecosystem is actually getting developed to support that i'm sure that most of you all the h9 of you who have participated in this will actually see to become unicorns and multiple unicorns into the days to come because we know that how bajus have grown into a very very large uh, organization in a very short period of time and arjun who is joining us from abgrad uh, was earlier uh, with bajus so uh, he will be sharing a few of those thoughts also so you can see that the, there is a huge potential for us and it's not only that there is a potential it's also you are looking at and entering into an area working in an area which has got a long lasting report a repute and let me congratulate the winners but the winners are only to mark the small difference between the others all the h9 of your winners because you have made the change in the life of people improve it further wish you all the very best and thank you to rajagiri media rajagiri is actually synonym of quality education in kerala and uh, rajagiri media is actually taken to the next level thank you professor workis for that and thank you for involving kerala startup mission uh, in this whole journey we are very privileged to be a part of uh, this and wish all the very best to the event and all the participants thank you very much